I really want to like Dr. Mike on YouTube, but he really has some fat phobic tendencies. He's actually a fan of intermittent fasting, which is unbelievable to me considering he's a medical professional. In his most recent video, he talked about gastric bypass surgery being good for long-term weight loss. And just in general, he's talked about obesity and quote unquote, watching what you eat. He's done videos where he tried certain fad diets for 30 days, but I've never watched them, so I don't know where he stands on keto, for instance. Anyway, it just goes to show that even doctors can still learn a lot in their own fields. I have to respond to this, uh, as well as many of these comments. Let's get into it. Honestly, I was really disheartened, disappointed when I read this post. I'm not one usually to get upset uh, when I read controversial posts about something that I've said, but this one touched me. You know, I, I have a lot of patients who are overweight and obese who are struggling to lose weight, know that they need to for their health because they don't wanna die young. They don't wanna have a heart attack at age 40 or a stroke at age 50. They wanna live long, fruitful lives. And it's my job as a physician to help them do that. That doesn't make me fat phobic. I'm against fat shaming wholeheartedly. I've said it on Phil DeFranco's podcast last year that fat shaming is a form of destructive criticism that only works to break someone down instead of building them up. As a physician, my job is to help a patient get from point A to a healthy point B, not to make fun of them while they're at point A in hopes that they get to point B on their own. No, we're a team and we have to do that together. In fact, I wanna go through this post line by line and really Take it apart so we can figure out what's what. He's actually a fan of intermittent fasting, which is unbelievable to me considering he's a medical professional. I frankly don't understand this critique. I like intermittent fasting for myself. Never did I say it's something I recommend to all my patients or as a piece of universal nutrition advice. Universal nutrition advice doesn't even exist. If you've seen any of my videos, I said that time and time again. In his most recent video, he talked about gastric bypass surgery being good for long-term weight loss. Yeah, evidence shows that Gastric bypass, for those who are morbidly obese, has better long-term outcomes than dieting or just medical treatment with medications. That being said, it's not the only solution. It's not the right solution for everybody. And there's also different types of bariatric surgery. There's many options and you have to discuss them with your doctor to find out what's right for you. But just poo-pooing the entire industry is wrong as well. Because not only does bariatric surgery help you lose weight, but it also gives you better control of your cholesterol, better control of your blood sugars, so much so that in patients who've had bariatric surgery, we've put their diabetes into remission. I mean, that's huge. And in general, he's talked about obesity and watching what you eat. I mean, I've definitely talked about obesity. It, it, it's well proven that if your BMI falls under the obese or morbidly obese range, you're facing extra risks to your life. You are gonna have more illness, you're gonna have a lower quality of life and frankly, a shorter life than someone who is not obese. Does that mean that it will be true all the time? No, these are risk scores, these are averages. Also, many people are quick to point out that the BMI scale is super flawed. It's not a perfect system. And the BMI number alone should never be used as a sole indicator of someone's health. Remember, we don't treat lab values, we don't treat numbers, we treat patients. So you look at the BMI number and then look at your patient. So if I see a very strong gentleman in front of me with big muscles and a six pack and his BMI falls under the obese category, no, I'm not gonna think he faces serious health effects because his BMI number is high. We have to use some logic there. He's done videos where he's tried certain fad diets for 30 days, but I've never watched them, so I don't know where he stands on keto, for instance. I mean, I would love for you to have watched them because in my videos that have covered Whole30, keto, intermittent fasting, uh, even vegan, I've done these for 30 days simply to show how they affected my body, but I also talked about the science, what we know, what we don't know, because honestly, the field of nutritional science is an absolute mess. There's way more that we don't know than we do know. And I think understanding this level of humility is a first step for many experts, whether you're a registered dietitian or physician. Anyway, it just goes to show that even doctors can still learn a lot in their own fields. Facts. I agree. This is the one sentence of this post that I completely agree with. Being in medicine is a field where you're gonna learn for the rest of your life. In fact, there's a reason why we have to retake our boards. We have to continually have updated education because guidelines change. In fact, that's what makes medicine special for me. That's why I fell in love with the field. You constantly are learning, you're curious, you wanna know the most up-to-date information. 
That's powerful, that's good stuff. And I'm sad that it came at the end of a really angry message against me, but it's true. Now let's take a look at some of the most upvoted comments. I felt the same way too. I love all of his videos on other areas of science, but I take his health and nutrition videos with a grain of salt. Don't forget that much of the research within medicine comes from a fat phobic stance, so I feel it can be difficult for medical professionals to move away from that. I don't understand like what fat phobic, how it's being used in this, uh, give an example. You know, many years ago, we sort of viewed uh, those who were overweight as perhaps people who wanted to be overweight, who didn't care that they were overweight. That may have been true for a small portion of people, but there's individuals who have medical conditions that make them more susceptible to being overweight. And we have to address those in the medical community. So it's not about being fat phobic. It's not about fat shaming people. It's about addressing true health risks in a constructive way to help people become the healthiest version of themselves. Being overweight is not just a problem for heart attack, stroke risk, it's a problem for your entire health. Cancer risk, sleep, happiness, everything suffers when disease goes up. Most doctors also believe that obesity is a disease and that BMI is a good predictor of health. Sadly, most medical professionals are living in diet culture and fat phobia as much as the rest of the population. It's wild that doctors tell patients to lose weight when diets have a 95% failure rate and often leave people in worse shape than when they started. Can you imagine if doctors prescribed any other treatment or medication with 95% chance of failure? This is a good point to talk about. When we prescribe a diet plan or nutrition, plan. The reason that it fails is because adherence is low. Changing someone's behavior is quite difficult and we haven't mastered that art as physicians, as a healthcare system really. But it doesn't mean that we're failing because we're fat phobic. I do think it's important to say that I wish doctors spent more time studying nutrition and understanding how weight loss works, how cholesterol works. If you're a doctor and you're not up to date on this type of information, it's really wise to use a teamwork approach here. Get a registered dietitian on board, a behavioral counselor, perhaps even a, a consultation with a bariatric specialist. We have obesity and metabolic programs across the country that are doing great work. I have only ever seen one doctor in my life who didn't mention losing weight to me, so this is really not surprising to me. Show me a doctor who isn't fat phobic and I will be shocked. It sounds like the person writing this is going through a lot of pain. So it's not about being judgmental here. If doctors aren't immediately bringing up someone being overweight or obese, that could be okay, because maybe that person isn't ready to have that conversation. But if I'm gonna be giving you an honest assessment of your health, where you can do better, where your risks are, we have to talk about weight. It's like me having a patient who's a smoker and completely ignoring the fact that they smoke when I'm trying to optimize their health. I would be doing a disservice to them. So yes, when I have patients who come in for a checkup, for a preventive visit, so that they can stay being healthy, part of that discussion is weight management. Not because I'm fat phobic, but it's because I'm patient focused. Capitalism thrives on people, especially women, feeling inadequate and needing to buy something, either diet books, coaching, gym memberships, new clothes to show off that bikini body. I don't wanna blame this on capitalism. I kinda wanna blame it on rogue marketing. You know, I talk badly of detox teas and miracle cures. I've never sold any of that stuff, never will. I think it's horrible for my patients because it actually derails them from true treatment plans that work, but also take some work. You know, it's a lot easier to take a pill than get up, eat healthy, sleep well, go to the gym. So yeah, people are sort of excited with these shortcuts, but honestly, these shortcuts don't exist. It's not capitalism, it's rogue evil marketing. This one's actually in support of what I said. Uh, he's always advocating for preventable care because it's cheaper for the patient to lose weight than spend thousands of dollars on heart surgery and diabetes care. He's not fat phobic, he just doesn't want you in debt. I'm a huge fan of preventive care. I mean, that's why I love family medicine and what I do, because I wanna prevent a heart attack rather than just simply treat it when it's there. Saving someone money, saving someone having to take medications long-term for the rest of their life because they have a stent. I want my patients to live the highest quality of life with as least medications as possible. And part of that means lowering your weight naturally, if you're overweight or obese, of course. Look, I completely disagree with fat shaming. I'm not fat phobic. I want my patients to live happy and healthy lives. And many of the times, if they're obese or morbidly obese, I wanna help them lose weight so that they can reach their goals and have a high quality, long life. That being said, if you want more information, I have a whole nutrition playlist for you linked down below. If you wanna watch a really funny video to take your mind off of things, 
quarantine, right now click here for a memes video. Or if you wanna see what started this whole thing, check out my responding to tweets video right here.